For the Lord himself will descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who are alive will be caught up in the skies with the Lord, and there shall we be with the Lord forever. This is the hope of the church. My name is Faith Noble Adra. Do you want to understand the realities of these end times? Dr. Linus Pauling, a winner of Nobel Peace Prizes in 1954 and 1963, said he believes, and I quote, the greatest catastrophe in the world is approaching, unquote. What about you? Join me on the rapture this and every Friday from 5 to 5.30 a.m. on Sky 93.5 FM. You will touch the heart of our listeners so that they can comprehend what we are talking about, what you have given to us to share with them. In the name of Jesus, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Beloved, you are welcome to the program. I'm happy to be away once again with the program. Um, A lot of things have been happening in the news and we are interested because the world has changed dramatically and it is not as it was when we were born. And many of you can attest to that. Uh, Billy Graham in his 80th uh, birthday said he wished he could see uh, where the technological revolution is leading the world to. He said it at a time and even concluded that by his sorry he wouldn't be alive to see all these things. Uh, That is after visiting a silicon uh, kind of chip manufacturing industry and all the plans they have in place for a new world. And um, I'm going to t- touch on a few of those things for you before we continue with our series, The Country Called Hell. Over the week, you heard the UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon at the AU summit. And what was his gospel? What was his message? He was there to call on our oh, African leaders uh, to respect same sex, rights, marriages, and what have you. And he even went ahead to caution the African leaders that they should take a cue from what happened to the Arab leaders, that the people's rights can no longer be taken for granted. What Mr. Ban is saying, in essence, is that in the near future, governments around the world who won't accept same-sex marriage would and must be toppled. And I know what these uh, global elites are capable of doing. Very soon, they will be meddling with the politics of nations just to get the whole world to become like Sodom and Gomorrah. So the battle, I'm afraid, physically, we are not going to win this battle. What we can do as a church is to put our members on our alert and to put our children, the younger ones, because they will be facing the horrors of the days that are coming. I'm sorry to tell you, we don't have pleasant days ahead. A time will come. Hmm. And that is the UN Secretary General. That is the world your children will be. They spend trillions of dollars fighting climate change, fighting uh, what protecting environment, and they spend equally that amount of money destroying the very lives they think they are protecting. And that is the kind of world. That is the new world they are promising us. A world that is totally opposed to God and anything good. A world in which the number one civil servant can go around the world marketing homosexuality. This is the 21st century, and this is the world we are waking up to. We must not forget the words of Jesus Christ. They are going to force nations around the world to swallow this poison, bait, uh, hook, line, and sink. There is nothing much we are going to do about it. But we have to remind ourselves about the words of Jesus Christ. There is a great hardship coming upon the nations of the world, and... uh, uh, the church particular, we are the target. Because at the end of the day, some of you will not understand what I'm telling you now until your children begin to go to look for a job. And the, one of the interview questions is, what is your view on homosexuality? And anything you say contrary, you lose your job. You 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 you'll be deemed by the international community as the haters, as the people who are enemies to global peace and whatever they are calling it. And so you have to understand some of these things. Where are we heading to? Let me tell you, the motivation is simple. Some of you may not get this thing, but the whole agenda is to reduce world population by a significant number. So they are envisioning a kind of world where there will not be too many births. So how do they, one of the ways is just same-sex marriage. 
Get the whole world, 90% of the world. Imagine, it will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. There's nothing we can do about that. The only thing we can do is to lift up our heads because our redemption drawn near. So, when you see the number one civil servant doing that thing, what comes to your mind? The message I preached to you last week about great leaders. Bible says, hell from below is a stay to meet you at your coming. It rouses the spirit of the departed to greet you. All those who were leaders in the world, what were they doing? These are the things they are doing. So please, we are not joking. It is time, church. Let's begin finding out what is the way out of this crisis. They are going to litter everywhere. Our schools will be full of courses in some of these things. Today, you may not uh, think about it, but that is the kind of world that is coming to meet you. That is why I preach to people. I prepare people to face the coming days. I'm tired of all this kind of, you are going to get this, get that. No, a time is coming, all those things won't matter to you. The struggle will be over your very soul. The days are coming when you cannot stand in your church and be worshiping freely. Everything will be imposed on you. And that is the international community for you. The world marked a Holocaust Day uh, on Tuesday. And I know they repeated their slogan that it will never happen again. But I'm afraid to tell you the worst Holocaust is yet to come. There is a biological nightmare ahead. As I was telling you, there are several researches in high-tech labs across the world, funded by the same UN and their agencies. And what is the purpose? The next phase of human evolution. What does it mean? To them, we came from monkeys. That is it. God did not create man. We came from monkeys. So the next phase of evolution is that we must evolve into a higher being. How to create a superhuman. And they are doing all these things with the taxpayer's money around the world. Super animals. You don't know how this thing feature in Bible prophecy, but I'll explain that to you. You remember that as it was in the days of Noah, there were giants on the earth. There was a crossbreeding between spirit realm and then the physical realm. And Bible said they produced giants. They were called the Nephilim. And it's happening right now. <laughs> I wish you get some of this thing. The world is employing uh, biotechnology uh, to remove what they call defective genes. So some of you are continents who are not intelligent, you eliminate them, their population by a huge number. And breed only intelligent beings in the world. And they are doing this thing for various reasons. To reduce the world's population, to have a world in which we don't have we don't have people who cannot think like they. And who are these they? You don't see them in the news. They are behind the scenes. And the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. The next arm race is not going to, we are not going to be fighting with uh, human beings on battlefields. They are going to create human beings uh, more than what God created. I can give you a lot of stuff about that. But I want you to remember that the days we are living in are very destructive days. Uh, you may think you are in Ghana, but as soon as they finish manufacturing it, they export it to you. So we have what is called gene mutation. You breed between animal and human being then you produce some powerful personality uh that can uh, 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 just a, a lot of things a lot of things so i want you to get this thing the world is not as it was uh, when we were born so uh it is time to tell the church uh, to stop wavering between two opinions it is time to choose between holiness or helliness it is time to choose between heaven and hell where do you want to stand it's a very simple thing hallelujah the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Not the world. As for the world, they will not turn from their wicked ways. But those of us in the church, we must turn from our wicked ways. The very survival of us as a nation in time like this is not about economic indices or our credential in democracy. It is based on our repentance as a church. You can organize thousands of meetings for the politicians. It won't change anything. Unless we as a church, we repent of our sins. God always sends warning to his people. Change or you go to captivity. They say, no, nothing will happen. We are, everything is going to go on like that. God says, change, repent, turn unto me. They say, no, we've seen that with Israel several times. So please, the message we are preaching is very important. Let's repent of our sins. Let's turn to God. And have a time of refreshing or we continue in our rebellion and have a time of judgment but i get it god knows how to protect his own hallelujah i want to continue with the country call here i want to identify just two in my researches i discovered two major departments 
where a lot of Christians, you know, it's not just acknowledging that Jesus is Lord. You can acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and you live your own life. Don't think you are going to go to heaven with that. If Jesus is Lord, you do what your Lord wants you to do. Sadly, we have a lot of Christians in our churches today who are still drowning in hell because they have given part of their lives to Christ. And we are not touching on these things so that the people repent from their sins. In my research, I discovered that unforgiveness, I'm going to touch only on two. Unforgiveness is one of the reasons why a lot of Christians are going to hell. And if you are listening to me this morning and you are struggling with this thing, don't go to work until you are reconciled because you are not safe. You are in danger of hell. Unforgiveness. You no. Know, uh, some time ago, um, I went to a place to preach, and later on, I heard one of the people who attended the meeting was taking ill. That is almost a year after I left the place. And you know what happened? I went to visit this lady at a prayer camp where she was confined, and her situation was serious. When I came home after visiting her, I began to pray. I decided to fast and pray for her, so for her healing. As I was praying, <laughs> the Lord revealed to me that she will not survive it. She will go. And I was annoyed. I was, it, the appetite for the prayer just left me. Everything. The Lord has done those things uh, with me quite a number of times uh, in people's final moments. So I asked the Lord, so why did you send me? If you know she would die, why did you send me at the end of the day? And the Lord reminded me, did, did you remember what you were telling her when you went? And I remember that I told her that what she's going through God is not responsible. So she shouldn't hold any grudge in her heart against God. And that was the problem. The Lord explained to me that she will go. But if she will come to heaven, she must do away with all that bitterness in her heart. It was not long she passed away. But I believe she got a message before she left. And the point is that many of us are very bitter. Even against God himself. Many of us have a case against God. We are not forgiving our fellow human beings let alone God himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? And these things are happening. Jesus said, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. Meaning, if you don't forgive, they don't forgive you too either. Let me pick my first eyewitness account. And you see how even those of us on the pulpit, many are going to hell for unforgiveness. It is not something you can look at a person, the anointing on a person, and say all is well with him. Because what is inside there, only God can tell. Unforgiveness. I'm picking this account from Christian Wound up in hell, Camelo Brains. He wrote, and I quote, In hell we saw many who thought they were living holy while on earth, but now they were just begging for mercy and another chance. My soul ached so much. We saw a woman who was acting like she was reading the word of God and preaching about John 3.16 in hell. She said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life jesus said she was there because she could never forgive her husband she never managed to forgive her husband this woman had been shepherding an evangelical church for 35 years but now in hell she's begging for one more chance to forgive her husband the bible wants us to settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court do it while you are still with him on the way or he may hand you uh, over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and then you may be thrown into prison and that is scripture uh, Matthew 5 25 after 35 years of ministry just unforgiveness ended her up in hell I've read many accounts of the same unforgiveness stuff there is one about a minister also about 30 years in ministry she, she was also a woman a woman a lady minister and I'm going to show you pretty soon that the department is actually for women in here, I learned the majority of those who are going there for unforgiveness are women. The husband, this lady pastor, the husband was involved in adultery. Well, the husband asked for forgiveness, confessed, and repented, but the woman never forgave. Until eventually the devil took over the matter, and the woman stabbed the husband, and then uh, the other woman to death. And she was spotted in hell now trying to forgive it's, it's, that is it after 30 years in ministry you can still go down hell there that is why most of the time people tell me oh faith people are crying against you some pastors say if they get you they'll do this ask them and they call themselves pastors hatred burning with hatred what kind of a heaven are you going to bitterness it's on the pulpit all over the place we can wear the coat on it but i'm telling you you are not going to heaven with that kind of thing and it's true 
I had a personal experience before, and the Lord revealed to me that if you are holding grudge against those who are persecuting you, you are going to labor in vain. <laughs> and it left me in it. No, I'm telling you, the Lord revealed to me the rapture happened, and I didn't go. And the reason was you were having resentment against those persecuting you. So we are all in a soup. We have to change our ways. There's no superman in this matter. You can have the highest anointing in the world. If you cannot learn to forgive, have the heart of Jesus, you are not going anywhere. So that is a question to many of you out there. Simple. Yeah, the Lord told me, if you don't, uh, those who are persecuting you, you just pray for them, wish them well. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that is uh, unforgiveness. And I, we must understand, I acknowledge that some of you have gone to very terrible circumstances very difficult situations some have been raped some have been a lot of things have happened to many people and they cannot just let it go please you can choose between forgiveness and hell which of them is easier are you getting it that is why you need to allow jesus into your life he's the one who can give you the heart to forgive the role you have to play if you are finding it difficult to forgive is to allow jesus christ into your life as simple as that there's no antidote if we take you to counseling you can still not have the heart you need to surrender are you getting it bitterness is killing many people in the church i'm telling you it's killing many many people so anytime i see people jumping around church doing those things because they say you are going to receive this or that if you scan those people you find a majority of them they have a problem with somebody they have not forgiven and you are claiming car you are claiming visa when you have not forgiven your brother are you getting it let me let me give you this eyewitness account uh, from the testimony time is running out uh, by the victoria lady and i i, wa I want to quote uh, what she wrote talking about the same department of unforgiveness she said the people in this place were innumerable but i could clearly see that the vast majority of them were women they were divided into many different groups even if they were in the groups, it was not possible to estimate the number of people in a, any single group because the groups were extremely large. The Lord led me to one of the groups on the eastern side of the place. He looked at me and said, Victoria, this is a group of people who refuse to forgive others. I told them many times in many different ways to forgive others, but they rejected me. I have forgiven them all their sins, but they refused to forgive others. Their time ran out and they found themselves here. They will be here for all eternity they are eating the fruit of their labor forever and ever unquote think about it so let's scan our congregations and see how many people are locked up in bitterness jesus christ spoke pray the lord's prayer forgive us our debts as we also forgive others meaning don't forgive us our debts our sins as we don't forgive others as simple as that this is christianity practical Christianity. if you are not doing all these things and you are jumping around you are wasting your time yes you will go to hell for unforgiveness and bitterness get it straight as i said many of you have gone through things you have vowed never to forgive but please that is why the cross is there bible says imagine such a great contradiction of sinners against jesus they said we saw him do this he didn't do it we saw him they level every accusation on, on him but yes so he forgave them so what about us we can claim to be followers of jesus and be doing other things the next department I want to talk about, also very populated, I'm talking about only two, and is the one that has to do with sexual immorality, and it is one of the largest departments for which Christians, I'm talking about, you know, the basic requirement for going to hell is rejecting Jesus Christ, but you can go to church and still reject Jesus Christ, that means you are doing it your own way, are you getting it? And uh, the Bible made us to understand in Revelation 21.8, we don't want to talk about these things. But if I can preach this in every day, I believe more souls will be saved for Christ. Because the number of people who are in the sexual perversion industry in our churches today is just innumerable. And that is the opinion of God. You can't take it out. Let me pick this account from uh, the South Korean pastor in his book, Heaven and Hell, Thousand is to One, uh, Reverend Park Yonju. I want you to listen to it. He said, and I quote, I saw demons piercing men and women in their stomachs with a very huge sharp nail. I asked, what did they do? The angel replied, these are men and women who had lived with one another, but they were not married. These are men and women who had lived with one another, but they were not married. They are guilty of abortions, as they also got pregnant. They had never repented, unquote. 
it is common today for people to wake up from under the same roof and go to church they are not married the church is big who can monitor anybody it's difficult to monitor so people can get up from the same room oh they say oh, we are already going to marry we have already everybody know we are going to get married and they do all these things now the churches are afraid to talk about it the pastor is afraid because if he talk about it he will lose the members because other ministers are there ready to accommodate all those things in their churches and so that is the spirit that is the influence please monitor yourself this is the time survival of the fetus it is your soul the church may be big nobody will be complaining but remember it's your soul the day you drop out of this world tactically you have missed it they were not married but they were staying this thing is a common thing please i'm sorry to tell you some of these things but it is a very serious case they are in the eternal flames asking for help a friend of mine said fornication it was first called fornication then it became what affair in the church then they reduce it to what experience and then from there to carnal knowledge and then they call it now a game they are trying to decorate it it's still a sin no matter how much you decorate it and the young people in the church please if you want to escape the danger of hell if you are going to follow christ then you've got to carry the cross and follow him or you leave the whole christ business be in the world have your fair share of the world and when you perish you know that you perish by doing this hide and seek with god you are simply wasting your time i know many of you now go to churches where they are preaching to you repentance that is why the door is narrow and it will continue to be narrow if it's a choice if you like you can pass it adultery today Snatching people's wife and those kind of things, husbands, it's a, it's a normal. You see, the Bible says, stolen waters are seized, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Proverbs 9, 17. Stolen waters are seized. The next phase of the sexual perversion I want to talk about is what I mentioned earlier. The cancer of homosexuality we are having. I was listening to Mary Bassett. This one I'm not going to read from her book because she never wrote about it in her book. By listening to her live on the program is supernatural. And she was testifying about what she saw about homosexuals in hell. And that was a program, uh, Supernatural with Siroth. And she spoke about seeing people burning in a boiling hot lava on their arrival to hell. They include those who are taught false doctrines on earth, serve the devil, led many to hell willfully. Then she added the case of lesbians and men who slept with men who were kept under the same condition. According to her, the lake of this molten lava was for homosexuals and it is about six feet wide, very deep, with raging flames of about ten feet high. And the word of God was boldly written on the boiling river of fire and the word of god that was written on it was lovers of their own flesh than lovers of the word of god and as men sleeping with men and women sleeping with women they were chained with a black chain being dragged around hell spinning at a speed of like 60 miles per hour and she said this same says married folks they will scream and say no one cared about my soul when i was on earth is that true as they were being tormented she said when they saw her they were telling her nobody cared about our souls when we were on it the same people were arguing their case out now when god sent you to the pit you are going to regret ever following the united nations or whatever and their cause if you want to know the people who love you those of us preaching to you to repent from your ways we care about your soul I don't think we are going to listen to this message, practice same-sex marriage, and still go to hell, and go and be saying nobody care about your soul because you'll be telling lies, and they will punish you the more. Are you getting me? Say they are crying. They say nobody care about their souls. When they were on it, nobody warned them. And she said when they saw her, they were telling her, tell my family not to come here. Tell my friends that they shouldn't continue in the art. They regretted it all. They said nobody care for their soul. Same-sex sexual perversion. It's not a strange thing in our communities today, in our schools, in our households today. It is the latest commodity being marketed. 
in our nation, cities, towns, villages. Today it's not uncommon to find people in our streets, workplaces, who are pretending to be functioning like the opposite sex. You meet a man behaving like a woman, trying to play the role of a woman in what appears to be like a marriage, but in reality it is a mirage and madness. You meet a person in the street, dressed and walking in a manner contrary, and you are wondering whether you are seeing a male or female. You are confused whether it is Mr. or Mrs. or even a mistake, as somebody put it. There is no doubt that our civilization has gone wild like a bulldog and is on a collision course. Only those who are blind can say everything is right with this generation. Marrying same says, get it, can be politically correct. You can claim it to be academically correct, but as far as the word of God is concerned, it is pure nonsense. And God is going to bring you to judgment. He's going to punish you. You are going to look for the folks who are encouraging you. You never find them. You know it that it is it is pure rebellion against God. Let me tell you, I look through the Bible. The only thing that moved God from heaven to come down for the first time and say, I'm coming to find out myself to see whether they are doing this terrible thing is the issue of homosexuality. Bible says God came down. He said, I've been hearing the news that this is what the, the folks in Sodom are doing. I've come down. The only thing that moved God is this same sense. Look at heaven. Heaven is a beautiful place. Who would have thought that there is hell in heaven? Yes, God rained hell out of heaven on that particular thing. No, God has demonstrated extreme hatred for that kind of behavior. No, we know that there are beautiful things in heaven. But... He rained fire and brimstone from heaven. Who would have thought that God is keeping those things there? No, he had to conjure it from there and punish them as an example to us. So please get it. Our nation is heading for crisis. A moral holocaust. And as a church, we better rise up to the task. Because if the water rages very high, it will swallow many people. Even from the corridors of our churches. We don't have time on our side. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, we don't have time. I've been receiving those calls. When the people tell you that they are doing the same sex stuff, you ask them, do you go to church? They say, they go to church. And they mention their church. And they are Christians. I tell them, go talk to your pastor. And they are not willing to go. There is problem. Well, repentance. That is the only thing that can save the people. Repentance. Because I can tell you all those people screaming, I receive all these breakthrough stuffs. Many of them are carrying this disaster on their head. And they are heading to the pit. Sin has been led there. We need to come back to the gospel. The simple message that Jesus preached. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now we are closer to those days than before. I only pity the younger ones. Because as preachers, by now we should be equipping them to face the horrors that are coming. We should be equipping them. We will be selfish continuing this way. Knowing that in no time we will be gone. But what about them? What have we given to them to be able to stand the horrors that are coming? Because Jesus left us with no option. He concluded. He said only those who endure to the end shall be saved. It means that the rain will be very hot. That endurance, there is nothing he can offer you. Endure. If you don't endure, you will not be saved. If you endure, you will be saved. Read the book of Revelation. He who overcomes, overcomes are needed. How do we train the people? How do we get the people to, to prepare? They'll be making these compromises all over the place. Selling their souls to eternal destruction. So get it. God hates same-sex marriage. Get it. I'm saying it and saying it again. He made them what? Male and female. But you can choose hell. But remember, the United Nations doesn't have an embassy there who will work for your rights there. I love you. That is why I'm telling you this thing. Because the Lord is always prompting me, cautioning them, warning them. Some of them would change. Those who will not change, they will do so by their own choice. But you need to get a message to them. That is why I'm doing what I'm doing to you. Are you getting it? The next, the final thing I want to talk about in the same sexual perversion industry is what? Uh, the pornography industry. And many Christians are still locked up there. <laughs> uh, I want to pick an account from the same pastor, uh, Heaven and Hell, Thousand is to One, uh, by Reverend Park. He said, and I quote, I saw people who had 
their hands hard off by a very sharp saw. I asked the angel, what did these people do to deserve such an awful torment? The angel replied, their brains were given by God to think good and beneficial things, but these people had thought of filthy things. They thought of lustful things, unquote. So, um, the pornography industry, many of you are investors there. Your money is going to buy their CDs. You are patronizing them on the internet everywhere nobody knows in the church but god is watching you the problem is that if you do not repent if you don't break away from that addition you are going to be crying in the pit forever that is one of the number one industries of hell on earth some of you are there preachers your preachers are even teaching you that oh, if you are married you can use pornography for to spice your marriage you are living under the root of the devil himself I'm telling you, if you have a minister telling you, you are treading to hell, being led by the devil himself. I'm telling you, and that is the opinion of God. I'm telling you some of these things. Get it. Don't go there and say, you've not heard it. Are you getting it? Um, Jesus said, behold, I am coming soon. <laughs> My reward is with me. I will give to everyone according to what he has done. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life. And may go through the gates into that city. Outside are dogs, those who practice magic acts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. He said, He who is filthy should be filthy still. He who is holy should be holy still. He who is engaging in sin says, You continue still. The choice is there. So choose. He who wants to continue preaching his own message should continue preaching it. He who wants to save souls for the body of Christ, for the kingdom of God, should also continue. But get it, the payday is going to come. It's not whether if it comes. It's going to come. And you are going to be paid just what you sow for. Are you getting You are not going to receive anybody's distance. What I'm doing here, I'll be paid for it. <laughs> when I meet God, you give me just as I've done. He's not going to give me somebody else's work. So get it. Today you can please everybody around. Today I can be the bad guy in town, bad preacher in town. But the day will tell who did the work simple god bless you for being with me on this program today you want to give your life to jesus christ bible says walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lies of the flesh you need jesus into your heart we need humility even to accept jesus christ if you want to make a decision if you want to break away from all those additions you need to come to the cross of christ the blood is still flowing but not forever some people are going to exit the world today thank god you are alive you need jesus right now you need to come to the cross and you are not going back you need to remain at the cross because the days we are living in are very evil if you want to receive jesus just pray this prayer with me say dear lord jesus i believe you came to die for my sins i believe you are the son of god i believe god raised you from the dead on the third day i come to you forgive me my sins Forgive me all the evils I've done. Wash me with your blood. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. So that I can sail through these difficult times. And still have my robe white and spotless. Write my name in the book of life. Amen. God bless you for making that decision. If you want any inquiry, you can call any of these numbers. I'm working in the field of souls, so understand my language, okay? <laughs> If I'm to go to his own prison and want to free the prisoners there, they will resist me very fiercely because uh, the, the one, one word that will take me off. So imagine trying to rescue people from hell. Imagine. It's not an easy battle. It's a very tough one. So thank God you have heard it today again. Jesus loves you. Amen. God bless you for listening to this message. For any inquiries about the message you've just heard, you can call any of the following numbers. 0243 
0201-684-0279-935-868 or 020-1618-282 To get copies of this and other messages by the preacher, call the same numbers. Don't forget the word of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 16.22 if anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Jesus.